Hello, welcome to the Stockyard Industrial Lead. I'm Eric Miller, and today we're going to be working on the decals on this B23 Super 7, uh, B23 S7 Kit Bash, uh, S Fantasy SPSF Kodachrome. And I've not done a like a decal video before, and I kind of thought, you know, this is kind of basic stuff to do, right? But um, I don't know, there might be some things that, that you can pick up from this uh, based on the techniques that I like to use. And so I just thought I would present them to you. And there's also some interesting things um, when doing an SPSF locomotive that I thought would be cool to share with you some kind of uh, tips and tricks on um, how to do the lettering on it. So um, just thought I'd make a quick video on, on how to do this. And so what we've got here is the um, SPSF um, B23-S7 shell that I painted up uh, a couple weeks ago and it's ready for decals. I got the gloss coat on it. Uh, it's fully dry, obviously. And so we're basically ready to do decals. And what I'm going to do is uh, put the decals on this and then I'll get to um, the small amount of touch-up paint that I need to do. Just, uh, you know, some of the corners mostly like up here where the paint might have bled over a little bit past the, the masking tape that I was using, um, the painter's tape, and so and stuff like that, but not nothing major. So we'll do that after the decals are done. So that way um, I can, sometimes I, I need to touch up a little bit with the decals too, um, where they go through um, the like edges and, and creases and stuff. Um, the yellow matches up here pretty nicely. So that's good. Um, I like this, as I might've mentioned in the last video, the Santa Fe yellow seems a little bit darker than usual. So that's good. So we've got the locomotive shell. I've cut out the decals that we need. Um, as I mentioned before, this is a pretty complex paint scheme with all the different colors that, that we use, but the decals are actually fairly simple. So we have the lettering that go on the long hood. We've got the, the nose lettering. And so I've got SPSF for each side and then SPSF for the, the nose. And then I've got the, um, the numbers for the cab sides, the numbers for the front number boards. And as per Santa Fe practice, um, the numbers for the back, they don't use the number boards, just um, a number that goes on the back of the, the long hood. So, so that's how the Santa Fe did it. So I figure I'm gonna follow that example. And then um, the other nice thing about these decals, and I'll show you, these are relatively new um, sets by Microscale. 87, 1520, and 1521 is both Southern Pacific and Santa Fe. You have to buy both if you're doing the S full SPSF. Um, if you're only doing a Santa Fe or a Southern Pacific locomotive, you just get one or the other. Um, but these are really nice. They've improved them. Um, the lettering is a little bit more realistic. Um, it's kind of squished down a little bit more than it was in the past. Um, this is an example of what it used to look like, which I think this is a little more accurate. It's kind of hard to tell when a locomotive is at an angle, but, and they also include some diesel data, which is nice. Now back in the eighties and then kind of early nineties, there wasn't a ton of diesel data on locomotives, which is one nice thing about modeling that area. Um, but you can put a little bit on to really make your locomotive uh, look realistic and make it pop. Right, so I always like to look for those uh, details, and I'll be using a um, some prototype photos of B23-S7s, so I know where to put those. But basically, what it boils down to is you want um, your fire extinguisher label, and then these danger 600 volts uh, labels. Those are the main ones that you put on there. Uh, we might put on a GE um, label also, uh, which I might break, need to break out another decal set for. I think it usually goes on this part of the locomotive um, but again use prototype photos when I'm putting decals on and it goes a lot easier if you are doing kind of a fantasy paint scheme like I'm doing just find another locomotive out there and you'll see where these data uh, decals go on and it makes it uh, really easy so other tools that I've got obviously a nice uh, sharp hobby knife I usually crack open a, a new one of these uh, when I'm starting a decal project like this when I want to make really fine cuts um, might, you know, I keep this around as I'm doing the decals cause I might need to, um, get some more out while I'm doing them. Or, you know, if one of these breaks <laughs> in the water or whatever, um, I've got these kind of a backup, get to them real quick if I need to. Um, I've got some tweezers that I like using to, um, um, pull, help, help pull on the decals. Um, I also like using a toothpick when I'm applying the decals, um, something that's much softer on the shell. So you're not tearing the decals up. And then I like using this little uh, spoon rest here for setting the decals in and then have a place to kind of let them dry for a minute before setting them out and putting them on. And then finally, I like to use Walther's Salva set for uh, putting the decals on. 
Um, this kind of basically uh, makes the decal a little bit, um, kind of like thins it out more and, and makes it weak. And so that way it, it kind of sticks into those crevices and, and, uh, and really works its way in there. Now, some people like to use the, um, let's see, I've got a bottle of like Microsol um, setting solution. Some people like using that. Um, and I think there's another one that you're like supposed to apply before. I can't remember. Um, I just like the Salva set. It works well, uh, comes in this brush and then you just apply it over and then let it dry. So I'm gonna show you the techniques that I use after I set the decals. Uh, one of the things that happens is bubbles will come up, um, which are kind of annoying. So I'll, I'll show you those. And, but, um, but yeah, let's see what, what I'm gonna do. Let me show you a couple little tricks real quick right here. So with the SPSF um, cigar band logo, um, it's, it's a little tricky because these in the decal are made for, you know, whatever they had in the eighties, right? This is obviously a different locomotive. You can, usually you can find a decal that's pretty close, right? So this will be close enough and we'll see how it wraps around. We might need to cut out a little bit more of the, of a red band here. Like you can use this for example. Um, and that'll, that'll help you or just, you know, part of this, this one's got a big gap here, a nice red gap. Uh, so if you need to, you can cut them out. And so what I do is um, I make just little cuts. I don't cut all the way through, just little tiny cuts um, to give me some some room to work with so that when this um, comes out after, after being in the water, it'll break apart and then I can do the lettering individually. One thing you wanna make sure you do if you're doing the SPSF is to make sure the letters are close enough together so it looks realistic. Um, for example, like this, this doesn't look right. You want it to be close enough so it really looks like four letters, right? Think BNSF and what their locomotives look like, for example. Um, so that's one trick, and I'll show you how that looks as I get the decals put on. And um, But that's kind of the main thing with the SPSF scheme, I think, is you want to make sure those are, are close enough together. And fortunately, there's not a lot of prototypical uh, references out there for that, right? I mean, they, they did like a couple of SD45-2s, I think, which like Atherin just came out with. So, uh, so that's one example. Um, my locomotives are going to be number 2508, or I should say my locomotive, it's gonna be number 2508. It's just a fantasy number scheme that I came up with for the SPSF. And um, so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and start that. I like to, to work on the numbers first, uh, get that annoying small decals out of the way, and then work up towards the big ones that are a little bit easier to do. So um, I'm just going to show you this first one real quick here. What I, what I usually do is, especially for the smaller ones, I'll just dip it in the water, let it sit out for a little bit, and then finish uh, getting, you know, gelled there and ready to come off. For the big ones, I'll usually let these sit in the water maybe 30 seconds or so. Um, sometimes you can leave them in there until they start kind of lifting off. Obviously, with the smaller numbers, you don't want them lifting off in the water and then hard to get to, right? So that's, that's another reason why I let them sit out here. Um, but it all depends on the, the decal. If you've got an older decal and it's harder, um, you know, they're, they're a little more fragile, you might want to be careful not to let them soak too long. So these microscale decals are usually pretty hardy decals, so you can kind of do whatever you want with them. And they're not going to, like, break or anything. So then what I'll do is I'll carefully you know, pull it off with the... Um, tweezers here and just set it on the the cab there's the 50 oh, so it'll be 2508 fortunately I couldn't find that in in order and this is a very specific number that I want because it's actually the address of the house that I grew up in and so I just that's why I chose it I knew it was going to be in the 2500 series so um, then you can use your toothpick to uh, make any any other like kind of subtle that looks pretty good already, but but just use your toothpick to move it around more than that. Like I said, I usually just use the tweezers to kind of pull it off the paper like so, and then put it on there. Um, sorry, I didn't show that to you. Just uh, put it on the cab with the tweezers, and then sometimes I'll dip the toothpick in water a little bit if I if I need to kind of wet the decal just a touch so that it moves a little bit more freely. If you find that you need to do a, a lot more water than that, you can um, 
use like a, a Kleenex or something or else um, something that that also works is just to you know, dab your finger in the water and put it on there like that sometimes if you have a lot more water um, you might need to like use a Kleenex or something to dab the water right um, but that's basically what I do and so I'm gonna do this for all the numbers and do it for for these things and um, I think it'd get really boring if I did a video the whole video of me just putting decals on so rather than do that I thought I would just show you the first little bit and then I will check in with you as I get further along and then we will as I mentioned I'll show you how I get the the bubbles out of the decals if if uh, we have any of those so okay I'll get to work here and then I'll check in with you in a little bit so here we are with all the decals on, just giving you an update. Um, basically, I'll show you, got all the numbers and the data on there. So this is how the nose turned out. Um, squeeze the letters together and you can barely see where the lines are as you know this dries and we put on gloss coat and dull coat and do a little weathering, you won't be able to tell it at all. And then got the lettering as uh, you know, I. I estimated the lettering would take up a large part of that that really short long hood there and so um, didn't have a whole lot of space tried to leave a little bit of gap between the the war bonnet curve and the first letter on each side but it was really tough because I really didn't want it to rub up, rub up into the radiator area but had to now there's a couple of of spots that we need to work on obviously so we've got some um, stuff here where we're gonna have to touch up with paint which is fine Again, you know, after doing the gloss coat, dough cold, a little bit of weathering, uh, you won't be able to tell that there's some paint over here as well. And one thing that usually happens with stuff like this, as after you put on this little solva set, or you know, probably even with the the microsol, you might get some of these little bubbles. Same thing happens here where you get some of these door latches. You got issues like that. So what I always do is I come along and take my Exacto knife. Just want to poke a little bit of of a hole there usually be able to see it kind of poof back down and I do this after letting it dry for at least a few minutes and, and kind of set because you don't want it to get destroyed and rub off <clears throat> and then I'll take the solva set here and basically just target that that area so for example this one here you know just put a drop there a little drop there and then let it dry and then you know check back five or ten minutes see how it looks um, You'll probably have to do more applications. Um, this is just showing these couple areas. I do it for the whole locomotive um, where these problems are, but it's usually with these large decals. The SPSF lettering, I was a little surprised, um, kind of cracked a little bit uh, more than I thought it would like there. And also there's, there's a, a line crack through that P, um, but it'll be all right. You know, like I said, a little bit of paint um, will fix that. So. That's how it looks right now, and I'll show you the finished product. Again, you know, just going to go through this uh, with the solva set, and the, the knife, letting it dry, and then I'll touch it up with some paint. And um, oh yeah, one other thing to point out with the the steps here, I found some um, Kansas City Southern decals that I had on hand that had these um, the little step uh, decals for the stripes there. So got that done as well. And uh, I'll show you what it looks like after um, after I do a little touch-up paint and some more drying. So here's what the locomotive looks like after touching up the decals with some paint. And I should mention a word of caution with the Salva set. It is very strong stuff. So if you're using it on any of the small decals, you want, might want to make sure that they're dry first. Otherwise, they'll get really badly warped. Um, but anyway, so I touched up a little bit of paint on the logo, as you can see. And I also... Um, redid like that decal which got smudged from the Salva set um, and then touched up some paint there and then I also did a little bit of touch-up paint in other spots on the locomotive uh, where I needed to after the masking so basically uh, oh and then one other thing I did is I used a sharpie um, to go around the windows and the number boards um, the number boards uh, got smudged up a little bit but not too badly um, but that's usually my technique for that and so we're basically ready for weathering so I'm going to give this a gloss coat and then a dull coat and then just uh, clear coats there 
And then um, after that, we'll do a little bit of weathering with some airbrushes and chalks. And I've already done another video on that, so I think I'll kind of skip through that part. So the next video hopefully will be this fully assembled and ready for operation. And I'll show you uh, what it looks like when it's operating. So that's our the decals on the SPSF B23-S7 Super 7. And uh, thanks for watching. Hope uh, this was helpful to you and, and maybe um, gave you some new ideas of what to consider, especially if you're doing uh, decals on a SPSF Kodachrome. All right, I'll see you next time.